Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the Hot Hustle Podcast with Hype. This is episode 119. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building, reoccurring guest in the building. Reintroduce yourself to the audience, new listeners every day, V. All right. I want to, um, you know, Ken Rock. Everybody call me Ken Rock. Um, I'm kind of transitioning into Kenneth Thompson now. You know what I mean? With him, the little. Uh, okay, world. Councilman. Yeah, the world that I'm running into. <laughs> but, um, so I am is my, my my handle I am underscore Coach Rock. Um, I'm just a you know a father, a man. Try to be the best Muslim I could be. Try to be the best example I could be for my community and, and those that you know see something in me that they strive to be. So, shit. first of all, I just two weeks in a row I started off wrong. So I'm like, well, like Muslim Arab to Allah. All right, now now we hit the rundown. E Block Radio Network, two o'clock every Monday on the E Block Radio Network. GFT Radio Network, two o'clock every Tuesday. Two one six to blend Wednesdays or uh, two one. Uh, what is that? Twelve midnight, eight a.m. eight p.m. My bad, T. Um, then we go Friday. I say podcast Radio Network at ten a.m. Rest of the week is wide open, y'all. West Coast was happening. Custom Hustle is the clothing line. Custom Hustle on Instagram. Custom Hustle World on Instagram. Custom Hustle Co on Twitter. These would be. The threes. You got three different versions of the sneaks. Now, if you're watching on the eBlock Radio Network, you can see that these are the threes in my hand, and they also say hype on the back. They only say hype because they mine. If you get a pair, they can say whatever you want to say on the back. They don't have to say hype. But mine say hype because they mine. Now, uh, but yeah, we got soccer, baseball, football, basketball, uh, and hockey jerseys. Uh, custom jackets, custom sweatsuits. We got the spring jackets. We got the sweat shorts. We got the whole sweatsuits. You name it, we got it. Also the flip flops too. Uh, so we doing it all over there. Custom hustle. Uh, you name it, I got it because I own the outfit. Uh, H2H cleaning. That is my cleaning company. Last time I seen Ken Rock, first time I met Ken Rock, he caught me on the H2H cleaning job. He mm-hmm. seen me out there getting busy on somebody's lawn. <laughs> we do roof and plumbing, flooring, HVAC cleanups, cleanouts, all of that good stuff. And we doing remodeling. So at, at, at H2H cleaning on Instagram only. Now, Rock, this is like, uh, we're going to make this part five, both sides of the wall, part five, but this is the welcome home edition. Rock yeah. been home. Again, if you've been listening for a long time, we appreciate you hitting the button. You know, we only accept five stars on how to podcast. Fine. Me and Rock probably go back to like early 19. When yeah, 19 before to, the pandemic, yeah, yeah, this is before the this is before the Rona when the world was different. Uh, yeah. Rock used to call in and drop jewels on us from the feds on the fed line. Uh, going that this is a collect call from, you know, and like, yeah, he was in all of that. And we used to talk all the time back then and just communicate and to make sure that we could hone that relationship. Shouts out to Bugsy because he was the one who said, Now nah, I think it'll be a good situation if y'all got with Rock now. Mm-hmm. Me and you talking then, you had a whole plan for what you're going to do when you get home. All right? If you don't have a plan when you come home, you usually end up back. How yeah. long you been home now? I've been home now, um, 17 months. I'm going to do that after doing 16 years in federal prison. Um, the 22nd would be my 17th month home. Copy so, that. Uh, yeah. So now, this is what we need to know. How did the game, what was the game plan? How have you executed the game plan? Because let me yeah. say this. Yeah. Bro, I'm proud of you. Yeah. came home with all these these big ideas of the stuff that you wanted to do I want to get back into my community I want to give back I want to yeah. be able to dive into my boys I want to be able to do things different this time like you said I'm going trying to go by Kenneth now I ain't trying to go by hey Rock you know no it ain't that I was trying it's just transitioning and I find myself in spaces where I gotta yeah, say, yeah I gotta say I gotta say yeah. Kenneth Thompson and not yeah. K-Rock yeah that's what I'm saying yeah, yeah. um so, like, like I said, before I even let you go, I wanted to tell you that I like to give, give you the flowers while you can smell them. Let you know that this is what I'm thinking while I'm thinking it. I'm proud of you, bro. I'm glad to see these things. Uh, just because I'm not hitting you, because I can't hit you every day to say, no, nah, I see y'all doing this or y'all doing that. I'm watching. I'm loving it. Talk yeah. to us about the plan that you had and how you executed the plan. Well, yeah, all right. So... I got to think about being modest, right? And some people say too modest, but to me, it's just the understanding. It's not bragging if it's the truth, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying like the plan, the execution of the plan. So face basically, 
inside of prison, when I first got locked up, you know, I got locked up drugs. I got locked up basically with the mindset that I was supposed to be one to get locked up. Like I was supposed to be even getting shot, shooting, getting killed or whatever that the streets had told me and told me that I was supposed to be. As when I was locked up, you know, I just started to learn, you know what I mean? First and foremost, started to learn to my understanding the best I was capable of learning the Dean of Islam, which basically, um, you know, set forth a, a roadmap for me to walk as a human being, first and foremost, as a man. So a lot of that, 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 that transition right there was, if I say that I want to be this person, then this person is totally different from the person who I became. So with that with understanding within itself, a transition had to be made, right? So I went through my like my high spaces in Islam, maybe the highest I've ever been where I wouldn't, you know, curse, I wouldn't say anything ill, I wouldn't steal, I wouldn't do anything. I was working in the kitchen one time, I remember I stole some spaghetti, man, I felt like a nut, you know what I mean? Cause I felt like I was just going against the Dean of Islam by just stealing some, some spaghetti out the kitchen, right? So that's where I was at like spiritually at the moment. And that catapulted into me just saying, all right, this is my plan when I go home, because I really had no idea what I was going to do when I go home. I didn't know I wanted to do something different. At one point, it was like, all right, I'm going to do this. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Like, just businesses. Like, all right, I could do this. I could start a window washing business and make this amount of money. I could start a recycling business and make this amount of money, right? So then, as time went on, I just started to understand the concept and the reasons as to why I was in prison. And the reason why I was in prison because I was misled to believe that I was supposed to live the life that led others like me to prison. So once I started going through that, understanding like, all right, these are the traumatic things that happened to me in my life. And these are the ages that it happened. And this is the reason and decisions that I made after it happened. I started to understand that, all right, maybe I need to learn more about this decision-making process and go back to my community and help them so they ain't got to learn it while they walking off a 20-year sentence themselves. So that was my plan, to come back to my neighborhood, come back to my community as, first and foremost, a reinvented person with, as a teacher, a facilitator of knowledge, you know what I mean? So that was my plan. And for the most part, that's the goal, to facilitate knowledge back to those who don't have the knowledge or may not have been provided with the knowledge and help them make better choices about their life. And basically, that's it. All right, so now we want I want to go into a couple of different things that you did. Yeah. I know you was doing the speaking at the schools. Yeah. When you're standing there on the stage and you're looking out at these kids, and I know right, in your heads, this is you is you going like, damn, I'm really doing it. I'm here and I'm making it happen. Is it like is yeah. they gonna really listen to me? Do they even know who I am? Like yeah, what's the I, thought process when you stand? Because now it's happening. Like it's yeah. different for me designing the stinks and now I'm going, damn, they here. <laughs> like, yeah. I think, like, the first, when I first came home, I think I spoke with him my first month home. My man Keith, he had put me in front of some kids. And um, he was fixing them houses, had the kids in there teaching them. And he called me. And when I was there, like, I was very, very excited, you know what I mean, for that moment. You know what I mean, I always be grateful for him for putting me in that space because, um, it was just a feeling surreal, like, all right, I'm here. I'm talking to kids, like you said. Like, like when I go to a school or something, it's like, all right, I'm really here. I know some kids don't want to listen because some kids don't understand the magnitude of what I'm saying or the space that they in as kids. But nine times out of ten, it's going to be three to five faces and eyes that I catch. And I really feel like I'm touching those people. Um, so it'd be surreal talking to kids. Um, one of the most surreal moments for me when I had a speaking um facilitation at the state prison in Maryland. I spoke for 90 minute sessions at three different, uh, at a low, high and a medium facility inside of Maryland State Prison. And that was like, it was like the best, one of the best days of my life so far. You know what I'm saying? Being able to speak to them in that space and affect them in that magnitude. So it be you real. Yeah. Glad you went there. Walking yeah. back through the doors. Yeah. And now, you got a whole different perspective because you're here for a whole nother reason. You're here yeah. of your own free will instead of, man, I got this dub to walk off. Walking back through them doors, though, and now you're talking to these people about, I know exactly what you're going through, how you was there. Talk to me about that feeling because, again, staring out at them faces, like you said, and I'm looking and I know he listening. I know he ain't listening. 
talk to us about that? Yeah, I think like when I went to the Maryland State Prison, um, it was like it was all that because I didn't like I when I first came in, like I know the prison. I, even though I've never been to Maryland State Prison, I've been in the feds. And one thing I learned is prison is prison, right? No matter where you go, prison gonna look the same. It's gonna be a certain amount of people in it that look like you. It's gonna be these people, that people, people on certain wavelengths and all that. So when I walk in there, bang, I go to the gym. First when I walk in, I go to the front check-in, bang. At the time I was married, we go in there and um, it was like, yo, I'm going into the prison. You know what I mean? I'm checking in this joint and they treating me different than I always got treat, treating me like a person. Mm-hmm. That's why I said walking, walking back yeah. in there doing the other way is a whole level of experience. Yeah, I'm getting treated like a person. Like I'm laughing, joking, big. Cause they don't know that I've been in prison yet, right? So the people at the front desk don't know that I served 16 years in federal prison. So they just thinking I'm a you know professional coming in. They got my uh, flyers and all that around the prison, you know, life coach. And they might think I'm bored. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I got shoes on. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Not even I'm, that. Hold on. See, right yeah. here. Let me stop you from saying this because you yeah. talked about this in the initial answer with the mentality yeah. and the thought process. They didn't. They don't know you are the ball. You yeah. are the ball. You always was that ball. Yeah. They just didn't know that. That's on them for not knowing. That's not on for you to carry it any less. That's why yeah. we said, like, I don't really want to say this like I'm bragging. Don't never feel like you got to be overly humble with me. Because I ain't yeah. never going to be overly humble with If you ain't pumping yeah. yourself, nobody is. Allah yeah. blesses you with certain gifts, and it's on you to recognize and, and send it like, uh, uh, how can I say this? Uh, it's on you to make sure that those gifts are utilized and not wasted. Yeah. If you get a gift and you don't utilize it and you're just wasting it, then that's bad on you. So if you got something and you're accomplishing something, like you said, I'm coming back into jail with posters about I'm a life coach and I'm doing this. Like, acknowledge that. Yeah, you know yeah. saying? Don't you demean the fact that, yeah, I was that boy when I was here and y'all was treating me like a nut because my number was 28261. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? That was on them, not on you. Yeah, my bad. My bad for jumping on you on that one, but no, no, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. It's a struggle I'm going through right now. It's called survivor's remorse. Like I understand it, it got a lot of these drinks, but um, it's gonna take. Yeah, it's gonna take some time. We're gonna have to do. We're gonna yeah. get a little more than seventeen, but we we out here now. Yeah. So, <laughs> so when I um I go in the job, first person I meet, I shake his hand. He he um he incarcerated, but I see he put together the joint, put together the speaker system and all that. So I holler at them, what's up, bro? Woo, woo, woo. So he like, all right, I'm telling him where I want the stuff at. So then when I go back over, I'm talking to him and a few of his homies. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I did, I'm telling him my drink, like I'm before the before the seminar start. So he like, man, I'm telling you, I was just telling them that you spoke and when you start, you talk like you you had some prison in you. <laughs> you tell me. So I said, yeah, man, I'm of prison. So that just let me know, like, people that have been in prison and been in jail, we have a certain connection with each other without even expressing it, right? So this is the message that I conveyed to the people inside was that, cause what I realized that even though I was gone probably for a year, 13 months at that time, I was comfortable in that side of that prison as if I never left. And I, I could have went to that bunk, any bunk in that room that night and went to sleep. Sound, knocked out, you feel what I'm saying? And like I expressed to them was, I was even more comfortable in that space and that gym talking to people that I never met in my life than I had than I was the night before sleeping in the Holiday Inn Hotel. So that let me know, like, at the end of the day, I'm of something. You know what I'm saying? I represent something everywhere, anything I do, I'm of a person who spent the majority of his life inside the walls of prison. So that's also the situation of like the, uh, you say 17 years, you down, that's them trying to beat in your head that like, this is what you are, this is what you're going to be and you ain't never getting the fuck out of here. And it's, it take a lot, for some people can't get out of that mindset because they didn't beat it in their head so much. Some niggas come home for two days and go right back up top. Yeah. Because they can't even comprehend trying to be home with get a job, take care of your kids or even where am I going to eat tonight? Like, yeah. Nobody might not have never ruled for you them 17 years. Now, where are you going? Where are you getting paroled to? Like, yeah. what's the happiness you got on the joint? Some niggas would just rather be right back up top with these same niggas than even trying to deal with any of that. So yeah. 
that's definitely going to, it's going to take some getting used to. But again, like I said, we home and able to get used to. Yeah, I think um, like one of the things I've reflected on over the last 17 months too, is just how hard it is to be out here emotionally. You know what I mean? Like um, the average person, I'm not saying I'm above average, but the average person not really going to understand what they're going through. They don't really understand their feelings when they feel something. Like if I feel uncomfortable, if I've, if I, like, when you notice when I was seeing you, I was by myself. Like, I'm usually by myself. You understand what I'm saying? I'm um I'm very big on community and connections and um, relationships, but the majority of the time, I'm by myself. And I understand that I'm by myself because I'm so used to being by myself. Now, the thing is, when I get in a space, a professional space or whatever it is, I'm comfortable enough in my ability to articulate myself. Right, so I don't feel uncomfortable in those spaces. I just feel like, all right, I'm in here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. However, for a person who's not comfortable with articulating itself in those spaces, will feel discomfortable, uncomfortable, and will automatically, um, subconsciously, you know, migrate to areas and spaces where they're comfortable at. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of those spaces. Or hide in the corner, yeah on the corner and I don't, I don't even want everybody to know I'm in here so I'm just go dip right over here I'll be right here for the whole program yeah. I can say I was there but I ain't had to do I ain't had to do too much outside my comfort zone yeah or you want to migrate with back with people that you feel comfortable talking to and things that you feel comfortable talking about so if all I feel comfortable talking about is for lack of a better term bitches hoes niggas and rats and if all I feel is comfortable talking in these spaces then that's where my I'm gonna limit myself too. You know what I'm saying? And now See, those spaces create different actions and thought patterns that lead you back into prison. So that go to what you were saying initially, though. But everybody don't have this. Yeah. Uh, when I'm coming home, I want to come home different than I came in here. Exactly. Like I don't want to come home on the same type of time. Some people can't wait to come home to be on the exact same type of time. Just like it ain't 15, 20 years later. Like you was 20, that was cool. You're 35, it ain't. You fifty five, yeah. it ain't. Like <laughs> you sixty five, it ain't. Yeah. If you had to have, you should. Then you ain't gonna say had to because you know people who don't. You yeah. had to have grown. You had to have evolved. You had to have had some type of change. Yeah. And if you haven't, then you could have just wasted fifteen years, or sixteen years, or twenty years, or however much time somebody did. But if you came home on the same type of time, then that's why I said that's how you get niggas who just can't adapt and they just rather be in jail. They don't know that that's what it is. Like they're not going to just flat yeah. out just say, "I'd rather be in jail," but <laughs> that's what I'd rather at. be in a comfortable space, a space that I'm comfortable being in. Is but that... even then, some. But even then, like I remember, you told me, bro, I ain't even know how to flush the toilet when I came home. Yeah. Like you told me that it was like making decisions like what I'm gonna eat. <laughs> like yeah. Some people, I'm, I'm in jail. I know I got a time to go to the bathroom. I got a time I can use the phone. I got a time I can come out. Everything is structured. And I don't have to deal with the real life of, like I said, wife, kids, mortgage, job, yeah. uh, kids over here, nephew. You don't have to deal with all of them situations. And if you just like, man, I don't even want to put myself in that situation because you don't want to grow with none of that. Copy us with some yeah. people's situations is, you know, but hopefully that ain't the situation. But I know that ain't it with you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, totally honest, like, this John do get overwhelming, you know what I mean? Like, this John overwhelming for me. Like, I I, I, I manage it by staying purposeful and business, busy and focused on something. But the emotional aspect of me being home is very, very overwhelming. It's very uncomfortable to the point, like, I express this to you. I'm open and express it. Like, I was married. Like, this thing, it ain't work out good because emotionally I just couldn't attached to someone else you feel what i'm saying and that was my flaw within the marriage and even with relationships with my kids like is you my son all right this is my responsibility i love you for the sake of love you but the emotional attachment is something that i have to get better at you feel what i'm saying as a father we was going right here since you brought it up because we had loose yeah. on what was that both sides of the wall was that part two yeah um what is your relationship like with your kids now? Because now, now that you are home, that you've been home, I know you was doing a YouTube where you was telling them, like, we ain't always got to go out and eat, and you was cooking up little stuff in the house and all that. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's your relationship yeah. like with the kids now? I think um, I think with my relationship with my sons, 
is an ongoing process that we all got, I got three different sons and they're all three different relationships. Um, my youngest son been living with me. Um, so we go through our ups and downs. Um, I find out what he don't like, find out what I don't like. Um, you know, but for the most part, I have the understanding now that he know what my role in his life is. You feel what I'm saying? I feel like he know like, all right, my dad role in my life is this. Um, I might not be able to, uh, you know, play games with him because I really don't play too many games. You know what I'm saying? I might not be able to like get a pair of sneakers when I want it or walk around past the trash can. You know what I'm saying? But my dad role is when I need him, he there. You know what I'm saying? When I'm doing something that's not gonna help me be a better man, he's gonna tell me about it. When I'm doing something that's helping me, he's gonna congratulate me and champion me about it. I do feel like me and my younger son have that understanding. My middle son, I think it's more so of we 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 check each other temperature. You feel what I'm saying? Like we don't have as much time together as me and my younger son, but it's more so of like, all right. Like he might hit me out the blue, like, Dad, you watch um Who Cloned Tyrone? And I'd be like, no. Nah. He be like, it's all right, woo, woo, woo. Because he know that that's my twist. You feel what I'm saying? So when he finds spaces, education, he's trying spaces, to find he's trying to find a way to uh meet you on a level, yeah. Yeah, he when he yeah, when he even when, I think even when he's get attracted to something intellectually, you feel what I'm saying? Like if he get attracted to anything intellectually. He think about that space that he in, and maybe that's like that's what me and my dad got in common. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, because um, in these situations, like with your kids, it's like yeah, I gotta learn how to be a son to my dad, and I gotta learn how to be a dad to my sons. Yeah, and it's gonna take it's a huge adjustment from we talked about that on that episode, like I said, where it's we just relationship through pictures and phone calls and intermittent times, like where now it's like, no, nah, I'm physically here and I don't like this or I don't like that. And it's like, yeah, well, yeah. I never got to know none of that through the six minutes that we was on the phone three months ago. Like, yeah. so yes, yeah, that's, a, that's a whole different situation. Yeah, then I just think they see me too, like I'm their father, then they see the accomplishments, you know what I'm saying? And I I, I only hope, pray that like that make them proud as my sons. You feel what I'm saying? Like, damn, my dad actually came out here and said he don't, because one thing about them, they know I'm moving. They know I'm up. They know I'm busy. They know I'm working. They know I'm moving. You know what I mean? They know. You know what I'm what saying? About your, so, what about your oldest? My oldest son, um, our relationship is pretty much um, a good relationship. But, you know, he, he growing up, 22, he just had a son. You know what I mean? So. Oh, he just, grandpa. Yeah, grandpa. Yeah, grandpa. <laughs> yeah. So he pretty much, like, we had a conversation yesterday just about, you know, the ups and downs of being up and down. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I, I, it's just more so of a guidance swing now. Like, look, you know, no cut card. You down right now, that's how it go. Like, you gonna be down. It ain't gonna always be up. You just gotta, don't stay down. Especially you once you got kids, because then you got, you you become the back seat. Yeah, you gotta stay, you gotta get back up. Them diapers, the formula, them clothes. Yeah. He never even wore this. He grew out of it. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's been wrong. <laughs> they tighten up, you know what I'm saying? And that's my whole thing. Cause, and I'm just hard with that. I'm just on the tip. Like, you got to tighten up because I've seen, I know, in order to live, you got to tighten up. It is what it is. Like, life is going. You can't cry over spilled thing. milk. You just got to get them paper towels and let's start cleaning it up. Yeah, you can't clean sit it up, here. Man. It hurt. You do it before it starts stinking. I'm about to say, yeah, you can't start letting it run off the counter now it's on the floor now it's down the line. Like you've created a whole problem while you're sitting here watching it instead of moving on the problem. Now, another one that you was doing was the workout situations with the community. Yeah. Like, right. You made the video, it was like, we're not going to do a thousand burpees. We're not going to kill nobody out here. Yeah, yeah. We just want to get the community moving. Talk to us about that one. I think the community workout, man, has been a blessing, man. Uh, for me, um, Show love for the community. But especially for me, I just love being a part of something where I see people like actually like getting better within themselves. You know what I'm saying? And to be a part of something that created the space, the opportunity for people who may not move on a daily basis to come out first and foremost, feel the confidence in themselves to come out in the public space. You know what I mean? 
And one thing about working out, you know what I mean? Ain't no faking. You feel what I'm saying? If you hurt, it's going to be in your face. It's going to be in your body. Like, it ain't no, like, it ain't no Instagram on that joint. The hamstr- you know what I'm saying? Them hamstrings tighten up. They tighten yeah, up. Yeah, it ain't no <laughs> So when I see the people, my I'm more proud about the people who come than about the workout. It's about, you know what I mean? Like the people who actually come out there. Like we don't have the um, you know, we don't got the, the bodies out there. We ain't got the um, you know, people who went through surgery and all that. We got people who actually more so concerned about their health than what their body look like. You know what I mean? And that's the most important thing. It's about understanding the the um the importance of health, right? Because health is a mindset more so of it as a health is more so in your mind than it is in your body, right? We a lot of times we associate health with how we look, but not health with how we think, right? Because we could kill ourselves from our thoughts more so than we could kill ourselves. How you think is how you, yeah. Sure. The yeah. voice inside is always the one that's the most important because just like we just talked about that scenario where you say like I'm coming back into the jail. Most of them people on the other side of the wall have been told constantly that you ain't shit and you ain't gonna be shit. Yeah. So then that projects onto you, and sometimes people internalize that shit because their voice inside saying you ain't shit, you ain't gonna never be shit. Yeah. So if you can't, don't matter what the world is telling you, the world could be telling you the best boy ever. But if that's all you're hearing, if that's all you're internalizing, not all you're hearing, that's all you're yeah. internalizing, then that's what you're gonna move on. That's how people yeah. be doing all kinds of shit. Like, exactly. So that's just that's, that's like where I'm at with that. Like the workout to me, bro, is the best thing in the world. Um, we got it every Tuesday, Thursday, 7 p.m. Every Monday, 9 a.m. on the 2500 block of Napa Street in um, North Philadelphia. Uh, when I went three two, we looking to um, move into the gym. Uh, inshallah, in September, after a while in the schoolyard, um, gym Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, then we're gonna be doing a Friday basketball training free for um, kids, girls and boys, basketball training Friday nights. We're going to be doing the men's group on Mondays um, at the center. Wednesday, I mean, women's group on Mondays, men's group on Wednesdays. Uh, We're doing Eagles Sundays uh, at the center, watching the Eagles games together as a community. You know what I mean? Just it was good until you brought the Eagles up, bro. Come on. Oh, man, I'm about to stand up. <laughs> it was too good to be true, man. <laughs> Oh, you ain't playing like that. I had to go to Eagles training camp work like a couple weeks ago, man. I was in there. Shouts out to the Cowboys. These dudes. Money's money's never personal. It's always business. (laughs) The the last one before you go, bro, Do you you just got an award or something? I know you made the post and was like, I don't even do these things because I want to like a pat on the back or nothing, but talk to us about that. What was that one? Yeah, so I, for the last three weeks, I got three different awards. Um, I got one, give you, give me your roses. Um, a lady, she put this together for the city for just people doing positive things. It was real good to see us giving each other awards. Um, so I got that. That was a good one. I got one from Philadelphia Town Watch, um, a service award, and I got one from the city council, uh, um, a citation from uh, city city hall, basically. Basically about Strawberry Mansion United, the, one of the, uh, the initiatives that me and a couple other brothers, Jew and Joe, and a couple sisters in the neighborhood put together um, about uniting our neighborhood. Like for those who don't know, Strawberry Mansion is a section within North Philadelphia. I was born and raised within it. Um, predominantly black neighborhood, about 20, 30,000 residents. Um, you know, like any other neighborhood that we know, you know what I mean? The hoods that we know. Um, but we were separated for a long time. A lot of gun violence that happened over the years, including myself. I got shot um, on two different occasions growing up by different blocks within Strawberry Mansion. Um, but now we're on a place now where we're uniting. Um, we find the spaces to connect from 33rd and Diamond all the way up to 29th and Lehigh. And throughout this entire summer, I mean, Blessings, all, I mean, praises all to a lost man or the island. It has been really no violence in Strawberry Mansion this summer. I feel like it don't get highlighted enough. Um, I think we had one homicide um, this summer. And the homicide, um, not to dis- discredit it, the homicide, I mean, somebody lost their life. Um, but we do hone on the fact that 
the homicide was like somebody had an Airbnb inside the city, about the side of the section, and people came there, and it was like nothing that stemmed from. It wasn't nothing community. that was, yeah, it yeah. Was, it wasn't nothing that was from there, yeah. Yes, and you know, um, so on that tip, like within our community, we had no type of violence against each other all summer. You know what I mean? And if you somebody that's listening to this who's not from Philly, uh, we didn't hit about four or five hundred bodies the last couple of years. So yeah. to hear that it's only one again, like Rock said, uh, not to demean the one because one is too many. Yeah. Because uh, somebody lost a brother, cousin, uncle, aunt, you know, however the situation was. Um, but to hear that it's only been one at this day and age here is a huge thing. Yeah. And we talking it's about a everywhere. high crime area. Yeah. We are talking about Strawberry Mansion, North Philadelphia. Um, like, like they try to take our school from us. Like we talking about a very high crime area, but at the same time, as one of the understanders of how things work in this city and in this community, we understand that they're not gonna really highlight the fact that it's not been very much a very high level of crime in this area over the summer because they want our community. You feel what I'm saying? So the more they highlight, yeah, the they came hard for us in South Philly already. Yeah, exactly. They came, they... <laughs> we still got a, a threshold. We have not been gentrified. Gentr- 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 oh, they killed us. We did. We're, we're dead. Yeah, you know, here we, we have every not. block, every block, uh, every block yeah. down here in our and down Twenty Third Street, Twenty Fourth Street. <laughs> home ownership, because we had such a strong hold on home ownership from the '60s. Good. Um, we was able to withhold, but, but understanding that. A lot of those big corporations and companies are waiting those homeowners out because now they're 70, 68. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. now it's about educating our community and saying, all right, the ones that's 40, 35, 50, we are the let's ones go, that show up now. Let's go at the daughter, the niece, and the little cousin with these quick 60 bands and they yeah. see if they bite. Yeah, like, that's how they got us. That's how they got us down here. Was We're going to get you to bite on this 80 bands. We're going to get you to bite on this 60. Because if somebody never had nothing, you showing them eighty grand in cash, they biting every time. Now, yeah, they, not even understanding they in a million dollar house. You not understanding I mean? that down here, they, these joints is half a million. Yeah, <laughs> like these joints is six hundred and seven hundred, and you ain't got a parking space. Like, that but that's a whole nother. That's a whole yeah. nother situation. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's gentrification in the city. We yeah, whole nother situation. Um. But go ahead. Let me fin- let you finish that thought. Did you let you finish? Yeah. So said? that's that's like we 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 have an understanding that like when we have our meetings, we have an understanding like we not really. I think our approach with Strawberry Mansion United is pretty much zigging while everyone else is zagging. You feel what I'm saying? I feel like everyone feel like it's a blueprint to do what get the bag, but what's the blueprint to revitalize your community? You feel what I'm saying? Because a lot of times when you get the bag, the bag in the community, you know, is this. They don't go one-on-one. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. we all know it's a lot of nonprofit bread out here. We all know. It's millions and millions and millions of dollars they dumping on some anti-violence stuff. However, if we put us, if, as Strawberry mentioned, united, um, if we put our mindset on only getting the bag, then we truly forgetting about the people who we say we're here to help. See, that's what I was about to say about this. Um, Cause like you said, it's millions of dollars in a nonprofit situation, but yeah. copy them. Do we need you to really be about the mission statements though? We really, you really out here getting these people to do these pushups. We need exactly. you really caring about this little girl getting to school and this little boy getting a book bag. Like we don't need you to just try to pull up and some, like you said, these two things don't equate. You can't yeah. have a bag and be here. Cause if you yeah. have the bag and you're here, he don't have a bag, she don't have a bag and now they're on your ass. Because you and just now, got this free money. <laughs> and now what the nonprofit world is turning into, what I see, and from just a familiarity of the streets, it's turning into another street game. It's yeah. turning into this my squad, we closing the door, I'm the connect. It's turning into bull crap. So a lot of it right now with us Everything is like- Everything always play like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, it, it go back to like, it, not just like going to something like what Michael Max once said, man, it's one of my favorite quotes of because it's so funny. And you know, not to get into the aspects of what a section uh, um, religious group is, but he said, he said Elijah Muhammad had the greatest movement ever in the history for black men, and all it took was a nigga to fuck it up. You feel what I'm saying? And I mm-hmm. always go back to that mindset because it's just true. Like we got all this stuff going on, and all it takes is a nigga mentality to fuck it up. 
Because now, see, you know what I'm saying? Not to go too far behind the curtain, though, but my yeah. dad and all of them was, was all into that whole situation. Yeah. So, yeah, I know the story. Um, <laughs> uh, but, Rock, um, I'm glad, one, like you said, the last three weeks you got three different awards. Salute to you for those. Yeah. Salute yourself. Tell yourself that you're proud. Yeah. Pat yourself on the back. And I'm glad to see that you're getting those flowers, that somebody else is you know saying, acknowledging the fact that what you're doing out here. Because, like I said, we was having these conversations in 2019 about, you know, I'm trying to get home and I got this I want to do and I got that I want to do. And it's like, yeah. everybody say they got, not everybody, never speak yeah. that broad. People always have, people be saying they got a plan. It's the difference between having a plan and executing the plan. I'm glad to see that you came home and you executing the plan. Salute yeah. to you, like I said. And I'm glad that we was able to make this one happen. But you know, this won't be the last time that we having you on. No Anything doubt. you want to say before we close out 119? I appreciate you, bro. I uh, put the whole, you know, you out of left field podcast, every last one of y'all, because like you said, you reached out, we we was doing this in prison, you know what I mean? And regardless on, you know what I mean, what I'm accomplishing now or what seems to be accomplishing, I know that a lot of the things that I'm, I'm able to do because I was able to voice these things and, and, and spread this information to y'all and get the confirmation that is needed too on the podcast, you know what I mean? So uh, I appreciate y'all and any, I'm always here. To the best of my, now, you know what I mean? I always tell people, yeah. like, if you used to watch those YouTubes, when you would be on the phone for, like, the 12, 15-minute joints, and yeah. they would be like, we've thrown, my like, two questions out to you, and they'd be like, we're just letting you go because we know you had to get off the phone. Yeah. But it was like, if you was listening to the audio, it was cool. But yeah. if you was watching the video, it would be like, we just all sitting there like, this nigga is killing this joint. The fuck? Yeah. Ain't nothing I can say back, but this joint, yeah. like, and it made yeah. for bad YouTube, but it was good. It was good shit. But yeah. um, I appreciate you coming on. That was episode 119, bro. We are out. I am hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's hype. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up.